following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very happy to have you here. And uh, we've got a special one for you. We don't do a whole lot of interviews, but when we do, we try to bring you the best guests that we possibly can. Today, we've got Jonathan Isaac. Uh, we want to welcome in him to the show and very thankful that he was able to record a quick one with us. Uh, very fun to be able to talk to him. He's a power forward for the NBA for the Orlando Magic. Uh, he actually made an announcement about his recent injury as well, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. Uh, and then he's also an author and an entrepreneur. We're going to talk about all of this and so much more with Jonathan Isaac. Uh, and so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Kind of first, uh, starting off, because uh, for, for everyone who's, who's watching or listening, uh, Jonathan's got a book out. He's an author. Uh, he's also uh, an NBA player. But your book, uh, I, I started, I've only gotten through about uh, just over halfway or so, so maybe right around three quarters. Uh, and it's it's really an amazing book. Uh, for for one, it's it's cool to see somebody, you know, when, when, you, when you think of athletes, it's hard to p- put you guys as human beings, as a guy right. that, you know, you're, you're just like me. It's just you were really good and really talented somewhere where I wasn't and made it really big somewhere where I where I didn't. Uh, and so right. seeing, you know, a, a, an athlete like yourself write a book as, as well written as it is, and then also with what, what the book's about. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to start off, if you're okay with talking about, uh, you know, why you stood and what, what kind of led you to feeling like, like you, you should stand in that, in that specific time. And, uh, of course, for those who, who didn't understand, maybe kind of lay out the timeline there, uh, and, and, and you making that, that choice to stand. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. So it, it, it goes back to 2020. Um, you know, you ha- they ha- you have the tragic death of George Floyd and um, really just chaos breaking out with, uh, you know, the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement and organization and just them kind of just taking the world by storm, you know. And, and the whole time I was thinking, like, what does this mean? Obviously, what does George Floyd's death mean and how do I go about it? How do I respond? Or even if I needed to respond at all, I remember having some early conversations with people who were heavily involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. And, uh, uh, you know, we would talk about the issues and I would say, you know what? I believe at the end of the day, we need Jesus. And it was like, man, we are not trying to hear that right now. Like, this is this is a completely different thing. This is a movement. Like, like there, we don't have time for Jesus right now. And so early on, I was very hesitant to, you know, kind of lend my allegiance or say that I'm, I'm a part of this movement or I want this movement to succeed. Um, and the more that I heard of the tone and the rhetoric of the movement, the more that I was uneasy about um, its ability to make do on its promise that it would leave black people better off than it was when, you know, when, when this happened. And, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of skepticism. A lot of people today would say that that didn't happen. Um, and it, you know, just created more division and controversy between, you know, white people or, and, and other people as well. And so, um, I was in that time. I had talked to some people, but, you know, during the movement, um, you know, it was about the height of the riot. And I remember I was in church and my pastor, Dr. Ron, you know, Hepburn at Jump Ministries Global Church, where I go here in Orlando, he was preaching about when Jesus was captured by the Roman guard and how you have Peter who lunges forward and cuts off the guy's ear. And, you know, Peter's like, I'm going to save you. And Jesus says, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And one of the things that my pastor said was, if we react in the same way that we've always reacted, meaning, you know, black people per se, um, then we'll get the same result that we've always gotten, that you can't. You can't defeat hate with hate. You can only defeat hate with love. Um, and so we can be the difference makers in this moment to show love, to show grace, to show mercy. And that may be the difference that helps you know us find uh, compassion and togetherness and a way forward after this tragedy. And so from that moment on, I kind of had my you know inside perspective that um, I understood how terrible it was when it happened. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, I want to treat people the way that I would want to be treated if I was in that situation. And I want to show mercy and grace and love at the end of the day, um, which covers a multitude of sins. And so our team, the NBA, goes into the NBA bubble. And, uh, you know, there's all this talk. But Black Lives Matter was everywhere. Like they had Black Lives Matter on the court, on the jerseys. Like, you know, the NBA went in about, you know, this movement. And, um, and at the same time, I want to say, like, I understood. Like, you know, it's, it's a predominantly black league. You know, players are very passionate um, I understood, you know, why they went about it the way that they did, even though I disagreed with the message or the overall um, idea of it. And so we get into the bubble and uh, uh, first team kneels. And so um, one team kneels and we have to play the next day. 
And so next thing you know, there's two games the day before. One team kneels, another team kneels, and it's going to be our turn the next day. And so we have this big team meeting with all the team officials and everybody, and they're pretty much saying, hey, we're going to let you guys make the decision on what you want to do. And uh, uh, they leave out, and it's just the players now. And the players are like, yo, we don't have a choice. Like, everybody knelt already. We can like just get it over with. Kneel, and, 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 and we'll move on. And uh, uh, one of my teammates turned towards me and says, you know, hey, Jay, what are you going to do? And I was like, fellas, you know, I, I'm not going to kneel and I'm not putting that T-shirt on. And uh, um, and boom, you know, again, chaos breaks out. Oh, my gosh, here we go. This is going to be a whole spectacle. Um, and they asked me why. And I was pretty much like, yo, like, I believe that the love of Jesus Christ is ultimately the answer. Um, and if I'm going to be throwing stones at a particular person or a particular race, um, then I'm throwing stones from a glass because we all fall short of God's glory. And uh, um, that I just felt like there was a different solution. Like they, they felt like kneeling for the national anthem and wearing this Black Lives Matter t-shirt was an answer to the problem and could bring change. And I felt that, you know, that wasn't going to be the solution. It would just create more division. Um, and the solution was ultimately left up the name of Christ. And so um, that's what I did. I was I, I talked to my pastor that night leading into the next day. And I said, hey, you know, I don't think I understand how crazy this is going to be like. I'm going to be an Uncle Tom. I'm going to be a coon. Like, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to be all these different things. Um, I hadn't signed my contract extension yet. And that was something that was, you know, kind of in the back of my mind about, hey, if this does turn into a cancel situation, because, um, you know, all the people that got canceled for comments or anything like that, you know, I could be out the league. You know, I'm, I'm praise God that that didn't happen, but it was a thought in the back of my mind. And my pastor said to me, you cannot stand for God and God not stand for you. And it was kind of this mic drop moment. And I was just like, you know what? I, I got you. Go do with it. And, you know, kind of the rest is history. The next day, I was out there in just my jersey because all we had to warm up was a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I stood and I was just kind of praying into my breath saying, God, you know, let this be about you. I'm terrified, but I trust you. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the media hit me pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. But there was an overwhelming uh uh, appreciation and people who understood where I was coming from, why I did what I did and the necessity to lift up Christ in the times of tragedy and how that can be an agent to bring us all together. And so, um, so yeah. 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 And that's the big reason why I wanted to have you on too, is because, you know, thinking back to that time, and I think it's even kind of bled over into 2024 where we're at now, um, where you, you've just seen a lot of kind yeah. of division over, over things where I feel like it ultimately boils down to that, where guys don't want to take a stand for something that's right, whether it be uh, out, out of your conviction, being a Christian, which I think that's that's one thing that really led me uh, to kind of being interested in your story and everything that you stood for was seeing uh, how much you were a very strongly convicted Christian. And I think that's an important detail about you. And I think, you know, seeing how, how open you are about that, I think that was really awesome to see even being in the position that you are, because like you said, uh, and, and you kind of answered one of the questions that I that I had for you too, is just kind of going into it, that thought process going in and how you, you mentioned how you were nervous going into that. It had to have been a nerve wracking moment. Uh, did, did you Terrifying. feel like maybe, did you feel like maybe your, your teammates would kind of reject you for your decisions or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, and, and to a degree they did. And, so, um, you know, kind of the, 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 the aftermath of that is, you know, the next day we have a practice. And I'm, I'm going, you know, we're getting off the bus back to the hotel and we all get a text to our phones. Hey, players only meeting when we get back to the hotel. And uh, um, one of my teammates hit, you know, nudges me and says, hey, you know, just heads up for you. And so we get we all get into the room and, you know, the guys are very passionate and upset, you know, with me about my decision. And and they felt like I was hijacking the movement and making it about me and uh, um, you know, all these things. And I just tried my best to convey, hey. Um, I just have a different solution. I respect your decision to kneel. I'm just asking for that same respect in return. Like you guys know me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a hateful person. I'm not a, you know, I, I, I just, this is what I believe in the same way that this is what you guys believe in. And um, so we were able to leave decently cordial. Um, but, you know, it, you know, it is what it is. You know, I, I knew going into it that it was going to be controversial and I was going to take my fair share of heat. Um, but I just tried my best to stay strong. Like you said, stay strong to my convictions. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I try my best to get people to understand where I was coming from. And to the people who didn't, you know, you kind of got to let the cards fall where they may. Yeah. And, and, and be, being as courageous as, as that was, too. I, I mean, I, I, I applaud you. I think there should be more guys like you. Do, do you think that there are more guys that may align with your your overall, uh, maybe maybe not necessarily down to the core, but do you think there's more guys that kind of align with you that just didn't have that courage to stand up and kind of make that splash? 
Man, a hundred percent. Um, I've, I've had countless conversations with, um, you know, guys white and black from different sports, even, um, who were kind of going through the same thing around the time. And, um, and I was able to give encouragement and just say, Hey, the same thing that my pastor said to me, you can't stand for God and God not stand for you. And, and there were several guys that decided to go on and stand after that. And so, um, what I have learned is that once, once you see somebody do it, um, it absolutely gives you courage and gives you strength to be able to do it as well. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful that, you know, I, God chose me, I guess, and I was the first one to do it. And I know that for years and years to come, there will be people who choose to stand up and more people will follow and choose to take a stand for what they believe in. Um, the way, honestly, that people who disagree are taking stands up for what they believe in. And I think that's the beautiful part about being an American. Um, and even a tangent about that, there was a part of me that was like, yo, like, I, I don't want to not, you know, stand for the national anthem and, 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 uh, and be a part of it, you know, recognizing how blessed and lucky I am to live in the, you know, the great country of America and how blessed I am to play this game. And so it was twofold for me. And so, um, so, so, you know, I, I, I knew it was, was coming and, and I've, I've had a, definitely a lot of conversations with guys about my decision and, you know, have had guys tell me, Hey, if this happened, then, you know, this will be the way that I go about it. And, and isn't it funny too, to think, uh, you know, cause if you take this back, uh, looking at, I think Colin Kaepernick kind of starting a lot of this with kneeling for the national anthem, that that was the the kind of splash in the water. But then, whenever it got to twenty twenty, when you decided to do what was really the norm, that was kind of the splash in the water. And it's it's kind of funny how that that kind of turned around, where everyone made such a big deal. Rather, right. ra- rather than everyone else taking a knee, they made a big deal about you standing. And I, I thought that was just something right. that, man, like that, that's, right. that just seemed so outrageous to me that a guy that just wants to stand and like you said, just show your appreciation for the country. Uh, you don't have to, that, that's the thing too, is that I, I think a lot of people just in general don't, don't understand that you don't have to agree with everything in, the, in this history, the, the history of this nation or what this nation does. I don't agree with it, you know? And so it's, it's okay, but there's certain cores to the country where you stand up and, and you show appreciation. Uh, and, and that's really what I think the national anthem is, is all about. And uh, that's that's why I appreciate guys like you who who, absolutely, who you know took that stand, and not only did you take the stand, but you took the heat for it, uh, and then ultimately writing writing your book, why I stand. Uh, and it's like I said, so far I, I haven't had a whole lot of time to get all the way through it, um, but ever since you came out with the book, I said I need to buy that book, I need to get it. Uh, and then time went on, and I, I kept on thinking, oh yeah, that came back up. I should I should really get that. And then finally it hit me, and I, we were walking through. Uh, and we found it in, in Barnes and Noble, and I was like, uh, you know what? I'm getting right. it right now. I, there's no more. There's no more putting it around and procrastinating. I, I got to get it. So I'll make sure to drop a, a couple of links. I'll put the Daily Wire link and the Amazon link down in the description, and kind of give that a shout out. Because, like I said, I, I appreciate you for for making that stand, kind of being the, I guess, controversial one and, and standing up. And I think, right. like you said, two other guys reaching out to you and you talking to them. I think that's really important to have somebody like you to be able to to uh, kind of be an encouragement for them. We're going to take a pause real quick from our interview with Jonathan Isaac to let you guys know the sponsor for this episode, and that is Factor. You guys can get yourself ready and get yourself going on your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of the meal planning and prepping and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store's prep work and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-prepared, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto and calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more. Plus, there's over 55 weekly add-ons that you'll have a ton to choose from. You have all of these nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. When things get hectic, Factor is very flexible. You can even change your order schedule every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. That's what makes Factor so awesome because everything is delivered right to your door. We've used Factor for quite some time now since they've been a, a partner with the show but I use them in the past and I absolutely love them. They're very easy. We, we talk about it all the time on the show. You put a couple of holes in the top, pop it in the, in the microwave for a couple of minutes, or if you remove the film and pop it in the, the oven, I believe it's only like seven minutes and your meal is ready to eat. And it's also served to you in a dish already. So you don't even have to clean up anything uh, other than maybe your silverware, unless you're smart uh, and maybe use a, a plastic silverware or something like that but they've also got amazing smoothies and protein shakes. They've got all kinds of amazing flavors. I tried the tropical smoothie uh, on the uh, on a show once when we were doing an ad read 
figured might, why does, might as well just try out a new flavor right in front of the audience. And if I don't like it, it's going to be hard to sell it. But instead, I loved it uh, and I finished the entire smoothie right there. And it really is amazing. I love their smoothies. I know Blake said that his wife loves the smoothies, wants to order more. My wife wants to order more smoothies. Um, Jeremy and, and his girlfriend, uh, his fiance, I guess I should say, they want to order more smoothies. They want to keep on ordering Factor because it's amazing. It's very easy uh, to, to prepare the meals. Uh, and then it's also just very easy knowing that it's delivered right to your door. So guys, go check out factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 for 50% off. That's code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0 at factormeals.com slash R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-5-0. Again, get yourself 50% off. That's an amazing deal and you do not want to miss out on this deal. As Jeremy would say, you will not be disappointed. Go check it out, guys. Factormeals.com slash rising250 and use that code rising250 for 50% off. Let's get back to the interview. Yeah, one of the other things that stuck to me too is that there are so many ways to support Black Lives outside of kneeling for the national anthem and yeah. wearing a T-shirt. And so, me looking at you know what my life and what we've done personally, like just in the city of Orlando with feeding and housing, you know, we talked about my pastor at Jump Ministries Global Church. We've done countless things, um, you know, helping out the community. So I'm saying, hey. It's, it's the order, them, them giving, it was one thing that started with symbolism. Hey, we're doing this to symbolize, but then it became an order. If you don't do this, then this is what you believe. And you hate black people. You don't care about black people, even if you're black. And it was like, hey, you know, I just don't agree. That's the answer. I think there are a plethora of ways to support black lives and I'm going to do it, you know, in the way that, that I see fit. Yeah, 100%. And I, I can tell you too, because, uh, you know, just looking at me, you know, you know, I'm a white man and I, you know, I took a lot of heat for just saying things that, you know, that, that I would say, or, you know, kind of, it, it is hard because you don't want to say something that that's going to offend someone as, you know, any, any black man, you know, I've, I've had, I've right. had tons of friends that uh, didn't want to discuss these issues with me because we have a difference in opinion uh, rather than just facing those, those differences of, of opinion head on. They just wanted to steer away from it and not talk about it. And that's, that's what I think things like what you did. And of course, I know you're not the only one, but uh, you know, guys like you being able to take that stand and kind of start that, but, uh, kind of going away from that topic a little bit, uh, we can kind of lighten it up a little bit and talk about your brand. You, you started up a brand Unitas. You're wearing the shirt today. Uh, and, and yeah. Unitas uh, kind of talk about Unitas cause you've got Unitas, the clothing brand that you've got, uh, in Unitas, you've got the judo one, your, your brand new shoe kind of tell right. us about your brand that you started up. So it, it honestly, the origin of it starts around the same time of COVID as well. And so, um, you know, I, I leave the bubble. I, I happened to injure myself. So I, I had a big injury inside of the bubble the second game um, after standing. And I remember my pastor coming over to my house, same guy, and he's jumping around and he's saying to me, you need to write a book. And the book is going to be a movie and all this stuff, pretty much prophesying, saying you need to write a book that people know your stand, but they don't know your story. They don't know what you struggled with in the past. They don't know the reality of how hard it was to make the decision that you made. And that's all baked into the book, my childhood, things I struggled with and how God was able to take this, this boy who struggled immensely with anxiety, self-insecurity and slowly but surely, you know, equip him with the ability to stand up for what he believes in um, by himself. And that's something that I would never would have done. And so with me being injured, I was a Nike signed athlete and, you know, Nike decided not to resign me. And so I went to my pastor and said, hey, you know, I don't have a shoe company. And he said, make your own. And I was like, uh, that's insane. Um, that doesn't make any sense. And he was like, you should make your own sneaker and wear it. And, uh, you know, we started to go down the road. Okay. We're going to call it the Judah one has to have Bible verses on it. Like it has to be authentic to me. And the conversation went from, okay, why don't I just, why am I just creating a basketball sneaker for me? Why not look to create an entire sports and apparel company for people who are lovers of God and lovers of freedom and hold to these, you know, traditional, um, you know, values of our country and also traditional values of the faith and, you know, have people from all different backgrounds, white, black, and different say, Hey, these are the values that I hold to. And here is a company and a brand that stands with me, um, in it, especially in today's days where everything is so polarizing and one by one, more and more companies are choosing to go in a different direction and they're, and they're free to like one thing that I have just tried my best to stay consistent with is people are free to make whatever decisions they want to make. I, I don't lose respect. I didn't lose respect for my teammates that decided to kneel. 
Um, they made a decision for themselves. They might have lost respect for me and lose respect for them. And these companies that are making a decision to go on another way, even if even if I think it's evil, even if I think it's 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 negative, they are free to do so. And so instead of just complaining about it, I can make the decision and say, you know what, I'm not going to shop there anymore, and I'm going to look for alternative brands. And why not, with me being a sports figure, create and you know a sports and apparel company? And so um, my pastor came up with the name Unitas, and uh, uh, we just started working on it. And slowly but surely, we were able to launch and. The Judo one has done so, so well, and I'm so grateful for everybody who's gone out and purchased it. Um, we're working on a reorder right now because it's, it's done so well. Um, five colorways. Each one has an individual Bible verse on it that really just speaks to me and I know you know speaks to so many other people. Um, Line of Judah, uh, Ruach, uh, Triumph, Exodus, and Unconquered are the five colorways. And so I'm, it's, it's just an absolute blessing, and the clothes have done really, really well, and we're looking to really like take it from its origins to really this up to be a real, real deal sports and appeal company. And so we're working on a lot of different things, new SKUs and clothes, like even like what you're wearing right now, we're working. Yeah. So we want to be able to offer something to everybody. And again, have unity through diversity. It's not about just being diverse. You know, I, that diversity on its own isn't a strength. Unity through diversity to me is a strength. So me and you being able to have this conversation right now is because we are diverse, but we're unified on certain things. And so that's what Unitas represents, people who don't look like each other, don't come from the same background, but are unified on the principles that have made this country great um, and unified principles of, of Christ. Yeah, I, I love that, too. And I, I love that you you came out with this brand, too, because like you said, too, uh, everyone has a, has a choice to make. And that's one thing that, you know, me is, uh, you know, for one, I'm, I'm patriotic and two, I'm Christian. And so uh, two of the things that I look at when I'm looking at, at you know, clothing brands or even just food brands and, you know, where I buy my coffee, uh, it, it, it just goes down to just about everything. There's so much where it seems like every company and, and like you said, they have the right to do it. But they, they they take a stand, or maybe they give their money towards somewhere else, and uh, or or they don't they refuse to give their money towards other things. That's why I won't uh, go and get my my coffee from yeah. Starbucks um, because you know there's certain things that they stand for that I just don't. Uh, and so uh, right. you know, and that's what, and, that, what, and that's okay. That, yeah, yeah. And, values and, and, matter. That's, yeah, and, and, that's and, one thing I've been saying over and over again. Yeah, and I think you making a brand like this, kind of opening it up for really, it's open for everyone. But then you you take. Uh, you know, part of that kind of, like you said, unite us, kind of uniting it uh, and, and and finding some sort of uh, connection to that brand. I think that's really cool. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to talk about and talk about these these Bible verses, too. What what led you to, okay. to picking these Bible verses? Because I, I, I wrote them all down to make sure that I didn't get them wrong. Um, but you've got Romans 8, 37, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 9, John 14, 26, Proverbs 28, uh, verse 1, and then Exodus 3, uh, 14. You've got, uh, you know, every every colorway has a different Bible verse. That was something that I didn't catch the first time I looked at them. And then I was looking yeah. at, at the rest of the pictures and I'm like, oh, you know what? That's really cool. You know, it's not just a different color. It's also got kind of a different message with each shoe. Uh, what 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 led you to picking these Bible verses to, to put on the shoes? Yeah, absolutely. We, we can go through each one. So the first one to drop was uh, Triumph. And that is the, uh, you're going to mess me up now with the different <laughs> five. Um, uh, Jesus, uh, I'm blanking now. It'll come back to me. So we'll go to, we'll, we'll, we'll go to Lion. That's, that's, that's the one I, I always remember. But Lion of Judah, it is the orange colorway. It is Proverbs 28.1. And that says, um, the righteous are as good as lions. And that has been a verse that I have leaned on for so many things just throughout my career we talked about you know my upbringing of struggling with anxiety and and, and fear and just you know how god and and kudos to my pastor and my church family who have been able to equip me with the tools to be able to fight back and one of them is speaking back and so before games i'm quoting the righteous or as bold as lines before my speaking i'm quoting the righteous or as bold lines and so when i think about sport and i think about just people out there in the world being able to have a reminder on your feet when you step on the court, when you step into your job, step anywhere to say the righteous are as bold as lines. I can defeat um, anything through Christ who strengthens me and, and I can do it and I'm bold and I'm courageous and God is with me. Um, so that's the line of Judah. Then we have triumph. Uh, oh, no. OK. Triumph was the first one. We'll go to unconquered Romans 837. And so that says, you know, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And it, it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, we are unconquered. Just again, have a motivational part of it where it's like, hey, um, I have been, uh, I've had my fair share of ups and downs. I've been injured. 
Um, but I am absolutely unconquered. I'm still standing. I'm still fighting. And that goes into the triumphers as well. Um, and then we have Exodus, which is Exodus. Mind me, it's Exodus. Uh, 314. 3 and 20, I believe. 314, right? 314. Okay, 314. So that is when... 314, thank you. So that is when uh, God is telling... Uh, uh, what's the name? You're gonna make me uh, Moses, he, uh, he says, uh, much, I am who I am. Um, go and tell them that, yes, Moses, Moses, I am who I am. And uh, again, I feel like it's the black and red colorway so dope to me. Um, yeah. I wear it on a lot of away games. And so I feel like when I'm going into other people's arena, I'm like, God, you are sending me here to, to win, to battle, to fight. Um, and I kind of have that chip on my shoulder when I'm wearing those shoes specifically. And so, again, something just to give to people, say, you know what? I am who I am is with me and he's sending me to go and proclaim his message to be a light unto the world around me. And, uh, and that's that. And then you Ruach, which is John 14, 26. And, uh, um, that's talking about Jesus saying how the Holy spirit is going to come and it's our advocate. And he's going to lead us into all truth. Um, again, just again, realizing that the Holy spirit is with us. He's our advocate. He's our guide. He's our, um, leading us into all truth. He's our comforter. And so when I step on the court, especially when I'm wearing the Ruach shoes and Ruach is Hebrew for spirit. And I'm saying to myself, Holy Spirit, you're with me. Let's go. Like, you're on my side. Uh, and the last one is um, triumph. And this is the, oh, 2 Corinthians 4, 9. Boom. Okay. Triumph is 2 Corinthians 4, 9. It says, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And that one, it, it, it may be my favorite one. I say everyone's my favorite one. But <laughs> again, speaking to the injuries that I've battled, um, the, the, the media ridicule that I've battled, um, I'm, I'm still kicking. And it, it is a true that God has seen me through. I have been persecuted, but he has not left me. I have been struck down multiple times, but I have not been destroyed. Um, I found a way through the grace of God to continue to keep moving forward and trusting him. And he has been nothing but faithful, nothing but gracious. Um, and, and to that, when I decided to stand, my jersey sold second highest in the NBA underneath LeBron. That's awesome. The, 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 the book became a national bestseller. Um, I got married. I had a baby girl. Um, the, the two to one has been absolutely fantastic. The clothes have been fantastic. So God is every step that I've taken to say, you know what, God, I'm, I'm, I'm in this to honor you um, in spite of the negativity, in spite of the controversy that I may face. Um, and he's been more than faithful, fit more faithful to me than I've been. To. Yeah. Do, do you think the, the Judah one, do you think it's a good, uh, just everywhere casual, everyday casual uh, kind of shoe as well? Or do you think it's more for the performance on the court? I think you have to be a real ride or die to wear them kind of just in your casual life. It's that they are a basketball sneaker. So yeah. um, I have seen people doing that. And I'm like, okay, you you really love the message and everything. But it is more so of a sports shoe. Um, right now, working on a low top that you can wear more so your everyday. And That'd then awesome. we're working on a everyday kind of trainer <laughs> slash runner um, that's going to come out uh, in, you know, next fall that, that looks so, so clean. Um, so we're, we're, it takes time. Um, but I, I do have to say, your early support truly to help. It's the only way that we can continue to grow and continue to create more products for more and more people to, 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 to be able to get and be accustomed to. And we want to get to the point where we're making product for everybody. But in order to get there, we need, you know, your support. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've been, I've been a part of startup businesses too. So I know how that works, you know, trying to, trying to push for you, you know, what your, your, your future goal is and you know what you want to reach, but you can't get there without the support of right. what you've got right now. Um, but I, I was talking to my wife earlier today. I said, well, uh, I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to get back into a, a basketball league of some sort, just kind of intramural, just, just for, for casual fun and everything, kind of getting myself active again. Uh, and so I was talking about that with her and I said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I should just, you know, use the basketball shoes I got, or if I want to get, uh, and then use, you know, buy some judo ones as casual wear, uh, or if they're more for performance on the, on the court. So maybe I'll just buy those as, as my new basketball shoes. Yeah. You, uh, you, so. you, you get it, get them for your new basketball shoes. I'll definitely have to do it. And I'll, I'll make sure to leave a review on how I like them and everything too. Cause I'm, I'm really picky on shoes too. So, uh, maybe that'll be a, a good I way for you to, to kind of get a, a good, uh, a good, uh, kind of description on them or anything too, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. Uh, and, and then the fact, you know, being a Christian, the fact that you add that kind of stuff to that adds even more to it on top of that, even if, you know, just outside of Christianity, they're just a cool looking shoe. Uh, I, I think every that. single colorway, man, I, I was looking at them. Uh, and I think uh, I'm trying to remember which one it is now, cause I don't have them pulled up in front of me. Um, but it's kind of the, the tan, uh, the tan and orange one. Yeah, uh, that was, orange line, line of Judah. Yes, yeah, that, and then uh, there was also the the gray one. Uh, that uh, I think it's got a little bit of blue in it, but it's 
uh, it's more gray. Uh, those were the two colorways I was looking at. Yeah, that, that's you're talking about Ruach. Okay, but that, that was the that was the big question. Like, okay, we're going out this to to create this shoe. I'm like, it has to it has to look good. It can't be yeah. we're just riding on the fact that these things have Bible verse on. I don't want to do that. I want I want I don't want people to have to compromise on performance and compromise on style just because they want you know wear something that's Christian. I want them to say we're getting the best of you know both worlds performance style and the fact that we can rock and that and that, that bleeds into all united's product and where we're trying to go in the future we want to be on the level of some of the some of these other brands when it comes to quality and style and then at the same time offer them for uh you know with, with the christian theme yeah yeah man i mean i, th- I think it's awesome and, and i've seen i've seen plenty of reviews on social media and all kinds of stuff seeing that they're they're very uh, you know saying that they're very comfortable they're they, they love wearing them uh and I've, I've seen especially i feel like you get a lot of uh kind of youth i guess i could call them youth now because i'm getting old enough where it, where it feels young but i guess high school middle school uh it's kind of where a lot of the a lot of the the reviews I've seen and have a lot of good reviews from them too. So it seems like people are falling in love with them. And, uh, I've even seen a few where people are getting second pairs, uh, and you right, know, get that way they've got, they've got oh, a couple some people of, have bought all, some people oh, really? bought all five, man, that's, yeah. that's dedication. It's, that's, it's, that's it's awesome. The, it's the same shoe that I'm wearing on the court. There's no difference. Um, some other brands they'll have enhanced pairs that, mm-hmm. you know, players on the, you know, NBA court wear or mm-hmm. anything like that. The same shoe that I'm wearing night in or night out is the same shoe that you're getting. Yeah, that's that's the thing too that I think is is really awesome uh, is that you know you're not just putting a product out there expecting everyone else to enjoy it. Uh, you're you're showing that you enjoy it. You you wear it and you're you're performing in it. And um, so you you know it's it's at at the highest level too. And um, so that's that's really awesome to see. Um, but going over to your your career, uh, I know this year uh, for Orlando, what are kind of your goals looking forward for the rest of the season? Uh, right now, I, ha- I had a little hamstring tweak, um, but I'm all good now. I should be set to go. I don't know when this will come out, but we got a game this upcoming Friday that I'm that I'm ready to go for. And so awesome. it's it's been great. We 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 are playing so well, um, yeah. and it's not by accident, not by chance. You know, I, th- I really do think that this is our year in terms of taking that milestone, getting to the playoffs, being able to um, you know win a couple series and everything like that. So we're going for it, and so I'm excited to be a part of this team. Um, we're a top defense in the league. Um, that's kind of my calling card. And so um, I'm, I'm excited to be here and just want to see Orlando continue to thrive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you guys have uh, it was it was crazy too because I hadn't been able to pay a, a whole lot of attention. I'm, we're, we're a huge college football program, or, uh, you know, podcast. We love college football, yeah. uh, and so you know we've been covering that so heavily that I haven't been able to really dive in and actually pay attention a lot to the NBA. So I was looking at it. I was like, well, I wonder where, where Orlando's at. And you guys are doing really good. I've seen you guys pick off some some top teams and stuff like that. You're you're yep. doing really well, uh, and that's awesome that you're you're gonna. Uh, be good to go. This will actually drop on Thursday, uh, Lord willing, oh, and everything everything going together. So uh, it'll be perfect timing too for you, for you to announce it too that you're you're coming back on the court. Uh, and then another thing too yeah, is you uh, you gotta uh, you don't have much time. You gotta make sure you you watching that uh, national championship game, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's on here yeah, in about yeah. uh, twenty five minutes or so. Do, do you have any Do you have any idea who you're rooting for on that? Uh, we have guys on both sides of our team split. You know, uh, uh, Paolo is with you know Washington. You got we got like three Michigan boys on our team from the Wagner brothers and yeah. uh, name is gonna escape me now. But we got we got a couple uh, Michigan guys, and so um, I don't I don't have any you know kind of cards in the game, but I'm just looking for a great game. How, how do you feel about Florida State being left out? Uh, I know that I'm supposed to be very upset, and <laughs> honestly, I have paid a ton of <laughs> I haven't paid a ton of attention um, to just college football or college basketball, really, for that matter, and so. I know that everyone was so upset. So I'm like, look, I'm upset too. You know, I'm, I'm going to tweet about how upset I, how upset I am. It shows <laughs> how much of a team player you are. Honestly, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't pay much attention to it. So yeah. you know, I, don't, I don't know why I'm mad, yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm mad for you guys. No, we were talking about that. We, we felt like it, it was it was rough. We understand the committee's decision, but it, it, it sucks. You know, I, I feel like the only right way to make it yeah. – make it fair for everyone was the, the committee saying, all right, everybody, we're opening it up to six teams this year. Uh, and here it goes. Um, but Manny, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that game. And it, isn't there, there's, there's, there's always one, right? Like there's, there's always a team that, you know, is right there, should be in it, but yeah. you know, they got to make a decision. So yeah, just about every I'm year, upset. I feel like it, it always comes down to that, but I know, uh, you know, my, my, uh, 
co-host Jeremy and I, I know he's not here with me, with me tonight, but uh, Jeremy and I, we were talking about going up to see the Timberwolves play. We were trying to figure out which one. I was like, well, we, we got, we're going to be interviewing Jonathan. So uh, we're going to plan. I think it's February 12th. You're going to be up there in Minneapolis. So that's, that's the nice. closest venue to us. So we're going to try to make it up there. We'll go watch you play up there. Awesome, man. Awesome. But, excited. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited. To, excited to go up there. And uh, I guess he hasn't ever been to a Timber or to an NBA game at all. So I guess that'll be his first time going to an NBA game. Uh, so I, I thought that it's was a good. It's a, that's a good game to come to, too. Minnesota's yeah. doing real well. But this will be a great matchup. Yeah, yeah, they they've been doing phenomenal this year, and, and they kind of kind of took everybody by a shock because you know they were they were decent last year and they were a playoff team, and I, I think they were a solid team, but uh, you know just the way that they kind of fell apart in the playoffs, they they really bounced back real hard. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited to go up there. We we figured we're gonna try to make that. I think it was February 12th, if I remember right. Whenever you guys are up there, so we'll we'll try to we'll right. try to see if we can get down close enough to to holler at you and say hey. Cool. But uh, anyways, Isaac uh, or Jonathan, Isaac, Jonathan, uh, thank you very much for for hopping on or anything. Uh, I appreciate you. And like I said, I'm going to try to throw links down in the description, make sure everybody knows where to find your book, Why I Stand, uh, and then also over to Unitas as well. Uh, it's it's whereunitas.com, right? We we are Unitas.com, yes, sir. Okay, we are. Okay, so I, I was totally yep. wrong. That That's right. I guess that makes sense uh, because... Uh, there was there was an, there's an e right in between too. So uh, right. that, yeah, awesome, yeah. So I'm gonna make sure to put those links down in the description so everybody can check that out. Uh, again, we thank you so much for making the time to come on, man. Appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Absolutely.